Conti, bella palla per Rebic, Rebic Ibra, Rebic, 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 il tiro, Goal! Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Sem Premier Milan podcast. I'm your host, Ollie Fisher, joined once again by Anthony Talgrude. What's up guys? Um, a little tired, but I'm, I'm here, I'm alive. Um, John's also a little tired. Yeah, what Maybe said, not alive. <laughs> <laughs> not really. Not we've really. all had it, mate. we've all had a, a good Saturday session, <laughs> and he's picked the worst day for it because um, obviously it's international break, so we don't have any games to to review. Um, we have got a game to preview, which we'll come to in sort of the second half of the episode. But thought we'd spice things up a bit by doing another quiz. Now, last time it was uh, AJ against Maddie, and Maddie won nine one. Now. Granted, a lot of those questions were hard, and it was just whoever was the closest to the answer won, and Maddie won a lot by guesswork. So it wasn't necessarily as much of a blowout as it seems. But I've decided to do this one 10 questions again, um, and it's about this season. So, you know, you don't need to look up historical nicknames or who was our number 10 in 1935 or anything like that. Some of these should be pretty straightforward, I'm hoping, anyway. Oh, and just um, so, in case anyone was wondering, Maddie's on his honeymoon right now in Florida. Mm-hmm. So uh, go harass him on Twitter. I'm sure the number one thing he wants right now is to be tweeting while he's uh, with his lady in Florida. So Absolutely. harass him. Yes, definitely do that. Uh, so he's not here to defend his crown. So it will go to someone else because he's vacated the belt. So um, we'll uh, we'll get cracking then. All right. Right. So w- what we're going to do. I was thinking either you could write them down or just say them, say the answers out loud. First person to get it right uh, wins. Um, so we'll go with that. But I've just thought of a problem as well. The first question actually has six answers. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Why is that not just six questions? Uh, well, let's go for it. And it's whoever can name all six of them. Who scored the penalties yeah. against whoever Real I. Are there? Who, 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 yeah, I don't know, one, honestly. Um, um, yeah, so the, it, I'll just, just whoever I, I hear say the six names first. Um, you might say the same name at the same time, but I'm just going to judge it based on what I hear. First question, name all six of Milan's signings from the 2020 summer window. I'm Finale, so tired. <laughs> I don't even know. Finale... Um, Salamakers. JPH, Salamakers. No, I'm not. Yeah. I'm counting wait, wait, wait. only new players. I'm only counting new players because that was okay. a loan made Yeah, because he was loan made permanent. Yeah, All so right. this is Delo- a, and Diaz. How? I'm just let him have it. Dalo. Dalo, Diaz, JPH, Tonali, um, um, it, uh, Brahim, and. Fucking Christ, why can't I think of the other one? Krunic. Kalulu. Not Krunic. Oh, was it Kalulu then? Kalulu, Kalulu but there's one more. That no, I, of you that's said. six then. Who did you... If it's Kalulu, Tonali, JPH, Diaz, uh, fucking Christ, I just said Dalo and we said him. Why, why can't we remember? You haven't got... It's whoever gets this gets it right, basically. You're missing one. This is so stupid because I guarantee I'm going to roll my eyes as soon as someone says it. Um, can you give me a hint? Give me a, give me the position. Goalkeeper. That's oh, shiny. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Jan gets the point. Oh. See, if I would have just so said so- the complaining about my least favorite player on the team. That happened last wow. time too. That's you why. Yeah. <laughs> this has happened before where you've spent time moaning about it instead of actually answering the question. Uh, yeah. But now, fair play. I mean, you, know, you both got five pretty quick off the bat there. Right. This is another one. Whoever names all three first gets it. Uh, the three teams Milan beat in the Europa League qualification stage. Oh, that was pretty damn close. That was damn close, right? I'm gonna have to go. You literally both said it at the exact same time, um, so I'm gonna go to a tiebreaker on this one. What He's was gonna the ask score? The penalties. <laughs> yeah, how many penalties were there in the shootout against Rio Ave? Fourteen each. Close. Milan won. Milan won nine eight, and they missed. It was thirteen. Three, so twelve. Each. 
Fuck, was it 12? 12 for yeah, the I was right, it's 12 each. Damn. I knew it was so double 24. digits. Yeah, I couldn't remember. 24 okay. pens. Damn. So, yeah. Um, good stuff. Uh, <laughs> well, this makes me feel sick. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, there's three answers for this as well. This is fun, isn't it? You know, I didn't <laughs> think about this when I was writing the questions about shouting them out. But uh, this one, again, it's whoever I named the three players. Um, the three players who have the most assists in the league this season. Hakan. Hakan, Leao and Leo. Teo. Bang. Really? It's well Teo? Done. Wow. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just putting a light on because I realise it's dark outside. Uh, yep, yeah, so that's right. That's Jan 3-0 up. Four teams that you've got on name here. This is question four. Uh, that's the theme. Um, the, the four teams that Milan have drawn against at home this season in the league. Roma, Verona, Udinese, Verona, Ude and Roma, Parma. and yeah, AJ gets that about goddamn time. Yeah. Four one, we're on course for another nine two loss. Let's go. <laughs> uh, that, no, that was that. Was, I mean, I was writing these thinking they might be semi straightforward, but then often mine goes blank on one thing, like one yeah. game that was very forgettable. I might have forgotten the Parma one, to be honest. Um, uh, question number, what we are now? Five. Yeah. Uh, Liao set a record in Syria. Six seconds. The quickest ever goal against... Seven Swallow. seconds. After how many seconds? 6.7 seconds. It was 6.7. I think the Neither exact... of you've got it so far. 6.2? 7.6 seconds. 6.4. 7.2. 7.3. 7.3. Like 7.1. 6.9. Yeah, I've got 6.9. Fuck off. So I remember tweeting at the time. <laughs> wow. Nice. Yeah, it was some places rounded it up to seven seconds, but it was actually just under. It was 6.9 um, is what I've got. Okay. But no doubt, no doubt that'll be disputed by someone in the comments. Uh Don't is the this question six, I guess. Ibra is the top scorer in the league with 15 goals, but who is second? Frank Kessie with nine. Bang has on. Ten. No, he has ten now, doesn't he? No, he's on nine. Eight penalties, one normal goal. I think he's got ten if you include Europa League. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. He should have had 11, but, you know, United ref. Uh, yeah. You should have had so, 12, but he missed a penalty also. That's true. That is true. Uh, how many... So, this question... Um, I will explain a little bit after I've asked it. It's not that complicated, but uh, how oh, many God. red cards have Milan been shown this season Six. on the pitch, not including Six. like the ones five. on the bench? Five on the pitch. Six, seven, five, four, three. Four, correct. <laughs> the, I don't five, know. I just throw throwing numbers five, out there. five, but uh, Donnarumma got... It's technically five, but... Donnarumma got a red card on the bench mm-hmm. during that cup quarter final. Ah, yeah. And I don't really feel like counting that. You know, no, no, so that's, that's why fair. I said on the pitch. So who are um, the reds? So yeah. We got Rebic, we yeah. got Bonali. Sa- Salamak has got one for two yellows within that's a few fucking minutes. Right. Mm-hmm. Rebic Benevento. against Napoli. Yeah. Um, then there was the Tonali Benevento, mm-hmm. and uh, we are missing one. Um, I genuinely thought there were five. Ibra in the Coppa Italia. Oh, yeah, that's it then. And then there was then... another one earlier on in the season. <laughs> it was just the donor rumor, right? Just, just let me have the point. Well, I looked, the point. that's what I got from the <laughs> list. Uh, <laughs> uh, right, okay. So I just move this over so I can see the question. So, wait, what is the score now? 5, five two. 2. Uh Yeah, was that question seven? Yeah. yeah. How, many, okay. how many more questions do we have? Three. Three. I ah, think it's so four I... two. It's four two to Jan. Because that was oh. six. Oh, that was question six. Okay. Hmm. So question seven. Of the players who've played over five games, uh, who has the highest passing percentage according to who scored? Donnelly. On a rumor. Dallo. Kessie. Teo. Kier. Tomori. Romagnoli. Rebic, Leal, Ibra. Samu Castillejo. Daniel Maldini. 
Oh, Daniel Maldini is the answer if you count less than five games. But I didn't count him because he's got like 70 minutes in Syria. Is it Mete? No. He's an obscure what? player. Like, you'll be surprised. Yeah, obviously. Uh, Kalulu. Tata no, Kalulu's up there. Nope, but he's up there as well. Brahim Diaz. Samu Castillejo. Defender. Kier Gabia? Gabia. Yeah, Matteo nice. Gabia. And it's actually like, quite I went through all of them. I forgot. He's on like 92% he... and he's played 10 games or something. So that's pretty impressive. There's our ball. Bit one, two is back to Donnarumma. This has reverted into who <laughs> can name all the players it. first. Yeah, that is. Uh, how many penalties have we... Hang on, I'll wait until... Yeah, oh, how many penalties have we scored in the league this season? 12. Ten. 12 is correct. Damn. And we're on the final question now, and Jan has won. So. He's won one? Uh, he's, he's won this. He's got an unassailable lead. Does he? He's too clear. Yeah, he's too he just clear. got it. That was his fifth, though, just now. Was it? So it's 5-4. Believe because or oh right, you just got yeah. the penalties so that yeah you just got the penalty that put you up five, five. Four, I had the one before right that. so you can earn a draw and okay. then I'll do a tiebreaker if needs be <sighs> all right so this ready. one might just be shouting numbers until you get it right but sure is how long how long was Milan's unbeaten run in Serie A that was uh, thirty two games Juve? oh 26, 26 games twenty eight seven games, games. twenty four games twenty seven is correct <laughs> fuck I said twenty six <laughs> and twenty eight are you kidding me <laughs> <laughs> that's so harsh man. Oh, oh God. hey, that was good though. That was close. Six four is good. That was that was all international break quizzes can be quite kind of an improvement. Thing. Yeah, mm. yeah, it was good. Um, I was surprised because I was reading through, uh, looking at getting some really obscure stats, like who were the three players who've completed over ten thousand passes, all that kind of stuff. But then I thought, no, let's go for stuff that people who are not to insult the intelligence of our listener base, but like stuff that everyone can get involved in. Because if you just start naming random stats, it's just who can name three players the fastest. Uh, but no, that's, that was good. That's one. what it was. Yeah, that was good. Um, well, we got a, we got some questions to talk about. As I say, we've got no games to recap, um, which actually feels quite nice. Um, I'm looking forward to football being back because the international break's never really done it for me. Um, I'm it's one of those, so like, boring. Yeah, I, I love major tournaments and I can't wait for the Euros, don't get me wrong. It ain't going to be the same without fans at a lot of the venues and stuff. But I just uh, personally can't go from hating players all season for 38 games, maybe more, and then trying to support them. Mm. Yeah, during, I mean, it's I midweek. Uh, do you know what I mean? I just can't do it. I can do it, but I just find it hard. Like, I'd rather I am than with, break uh, the legs. Calvin yeah. Phillips. I know it's so weird because we'll, you'll get on Twitter and like all all season long it's you know shitting on Juve players and then there's an international friendly against fucking Northern Ireland and everyone's like let's go Chiellini I'm like no yeah sucks. like I hope he breaks his leg but I'm like I incredibly two, surprised two players and it were immobile because we need him to score for Italy because that's yeah, been like a big thing that he hasn't and then Berardi because I'm just quite a big fan of Berardi to be fair. I hate him. Cheating flying. for an Inter fan. Yeah, apparently. But future Milan player. I won't mind it. Well, actually, we got a question. I mean, he'd be a I huge improvement, to... but I fucking hate him just because of what he did. I hate him. Times. He's one of them players that I hate that he's so good to watch when yeah. he's on form. All, always used to score against us as well, didn't he? Four in his yeah, debut against us. Four. That was the worst day of my life, man. I was so excited to watch that game. It was a like, cool newly promoted side. Like, we're going to crush him. Balotelli scored ah. off the rip. It was super foggy. Actually, I had family over to watch the game. It was the first time anyone in my family showed any interest in the fucking sport besides me. I was like, cool, it's great showing. Nope. Yeah. Hated him. That was that was bad. That was bad. They, they had a spell, didn't they, as our bogey team, Sassuolo, and Berardi as our It took like three we seasons before yeah, we got a win over them. Yeah, six won it. And I yeah. think in the seventh one, we finally beat them, and then we've beaten them pretty much every time since, I'm fairly sure. And they beat us in the uh, trophy, Tim. Yeah. That's the one that's unforgettable. <laughs> Unforgivable, almost. You know that was our. That's our cup. Our, I remember the. Um, this actually came back to light recently because obviously he plays there now. But Locatelli's done a couple of interviews recently. One with Sassuolo's official channel and one with Sky Italia, 
um, similar like set of questions, but uh, both times he's sort of looking back at, at when he was coming through at Milan and he said in his first training session, Allegri made him mark Kaká, which is quite funny. Apparently Montalivo said, I'm not marking Kaká, you can mark him, which says a lot. <laughs> really it's does crazy say a though, lot. Like, that it's been so long since Allegri's been our manager and Locatelli were training with the first team at that point. Which mm, yeah, that's exactly pretty wild. I didn't even realize that, to be honest. He was 16 when uh, he, he, oh, 16 at most. Like, that's if he'd had Did, his birthday that year. He'd won the, um, oh, what's it called? Is it the Via Red Joe Cup yeah, with yeah. Inzaghi in charge? Like, you had Mastali coming through at that point. Calabria were coming through. It was, so, I think that's probably one of the best Gunnar, years yeah. we've had for, as a youth uh, <clears throat> set up. Yeah, yeah, it is. And it's weird because the Primavera, like, he doesn't get the attention that it probably deserves, but then I think about it as a football fan, as a fan, you know, and not someone who's like who covers the team as a job. But um, youth football, there's a bit of a disenfranchisement with it at the moment because the conversion rate is so rare. Like you're looking at one in every two or three age groups that comes through and actually makes a mark on the first team. Obviously, we've got Donna Rumor in there at the moment. We're lucky to have Gal- uh, Gabia and Calabria. But I can't remember the last time a decent forward player came through. I mean, I, I'm saying Colombo and Maldini aren't fully through yet because they're both still 18, and uh, you know they're gonna they're gonna spend see, time. Push to the... say, I mean, if you do look at some of his stats, like the goals that he scored and assists, he were averaging, I think, every 190 minutes. I've checked a couple of weeks ago, which isn't bad for a young striker coming through. It, yeah, getting a goal or assist every 190 minutes and a lot of it was off the bench yeah it was at yeah. one point I, I, just such a rapid rise to being a fan favourite as well it still makes me sad how all of that worked out um, especially when he was sort of leaving as well and at the airport saying they don't want to go but it's for the good of the club um, and now his career's kind of tailed off a bit I hope he finds the right club you know, and I don't think the door is ever going to be fully shut at Milan. Like, if he were to explode, um, then, you know, I think he'd always have a place here. But it's just one of those. And when you consider that the money that we got from his sale basically went on Liao, and Liao's coming and arguably be more inconsistent, it appears to be quite a difficult one to justify. But um, then Catrona just hasn't done it. You know, That's where I'm seem to like shitting on the young, young players that come through. And uh, obviously, I, I don't know why they do it. Like, it's something that you just see across Twitter. Any young player that comes through is automatically shit. And they'd mm-hmm. rather us develop other people's talents. Where, as Catrone, he never actually did anything wrong. If anything, he was a breath of fresh air with how much he used to fight for the shirt, stuff yeah. like that. And he popped up with some important goals. So, the disrespect that he gets, I just think it's a bit. Locatelli as well. I, I don't. I'll never understand the people who bash the idea of us bringing him back. Now, I don't think it's a realistic possibility. And sadly, I think he probably ends up at Juve, to be honest, or um, or somewhere like that. Maybe even abroad. We'll see. Um, but I want nothing but the best for him because he he broke into the first team and he left because it was the right thing. The club told him he had to leave. Basically, they said, "Look, you know, we think it's best that we part ways." But also Locatelli accepted the move to Sassuolo with the view to actually getting some game time, developing himself, furthering his aspirations of playing for Italy. And it's worked out perfectly. And there seems to be this like overarching jealousy from Milan fans that a player's left and it's turned out to be a good decision for their career rather than a bad one. You know, they think the club's above everything and any player who leaves, it's because they were, were never going to be good enough and um, they don't like seeing him do well. He hasn't come out and bashed us or anything, you know. Um, all that's happened is he said he's flattered by Juve's interest, which, to be totally honest, I don't, I don't necessarily blame him for saying that. If, you, if ever you're linked with a, a move to playing in the Champions League or whatever, then um, it's a big deal for your career. But yeah, it, it is. I think it's, it's nothing but good things. If the more players that we get out of our Primavera, whether they're playing for us or playing in Serie A, it looks better that the top young players coming through will want to join our youth setup. Mm. and be a part of it because I think that there's a better route into football so if anything it's a good thing where mm. the more young players bring through I think it's for the better I don't like this climate either of um, as you say sort of you know it seems to me there's quite a lot of people who if, if they have anything against the Primavera players that are coming through it's because they're allegedly overhyped or whatever I don't think that's the case I think there needs to be a difference that's established between 
being excited to see a player in action versus overhyping them. I've seen people who are saying Daniel Maldini's overhyped. I don't think he's overhyped. I think people were just excited to see him come through uh, to continue his family's legacy. But everyone's pretty realistic about where he's at as a footballer. And that he's, he's an 18-year-old. He's not yet fully physically developed. He's definitely not yet up to up to Serie A standard in terms of being at a top four club. But he might get there in the next few years and he deserves our support. You know, too quick to judge. People are far too quick to judge. Um, and it doesn't create the right kind of environment for these players to come through. They need patience badly. We gave patience to players that we invested a lot more time and money into. Players like Chalonoglu, Kessier, players even like, you know, the Benacer who struggled initially. Um, we've given we've given patience, a lot more patience to big investments, 20 million euro plus investment. And yet there seems to be this thing, if you come through the academy, you're expected to produce pretty much straight away. And if you have a couple of bad games or whatever, then um, you were overhyped and you're never going to make it. Now, we've got to be realistic as well about where the Primavera's at. It's not very good. It's a lower mid-table um, in, in the Primavera top flight, having just got promoted back from the second division. I don't think we're yet at a position where we can think about fighting with the top academies in Italy. Should that be a worry? Probably not, because all it is ultimately is a conveyor belt to who can get the most first-team players out of it. Um, but then teams that are up there, like Roma and Inter, have pretty good rates of progression. Um, you look at players like Bastoni, who's come through. Um, Zaniolo. Yeah, and, Pellegrini. You know, and, and Roma's obviously, their academy's pretty historic in terms of the legends that they've had, but so is ours. Um, and... If anything, I think we've invested more in the players that are in the, the age groups underneath. Like we signed those three lads from Sweden, um, Bjorklund, Marshad, and Roback. And those those three are quite highly rated. You know, they were poached by all accounts. Probably Zlatan had a bit of a hand in it as well. And uh, that's maybe the way to do it. You know, you get them in and they still count as ours if we develop them through to the first team. Like Roback's probably on the cusp of, of making an appearance, really. Um, so, you know, Kalulu perhaps as well was brought in as an investment for the Primavera, but he's ended up fighting above his station and he's got plenty of Serie A minutes. So, well, it's both ways, but yeah. Um, Kalulu played first team minutes for, for other clubs before, right? No, he never played yeah, he never played a senior game for Leon. Really? Okay. He played for the does second he count team. Is like homegrown for us then? Since he never had no, a first team defense. No, we, we paid a transfer fee for him. But it was a development fee, which is mm-hmm. four hundred and eighty thousand. It's like a set amount yeah. fixed by UEFA that you have to pay. But he hadn't signed a professional contract with Leon, which means that technically he came on a f- on a free, but with a with a development fee. Um, but yeah, he played UEFA youth league games, which are pretty competitive. That's the step for us. That's the next step for Milan is to get in, get our Primavera into a position where they're competing in the UEFA youth league against other top academies. You know, to test these younger lads against like Man City's academies, which are funded Absolutely. by millions and millions. Then they're, they're way ahead of us, but you've got to compete against them to know where you're at. You know, so it's... let's just uh, go back a couple of weeks to Pogba scoring against us. Clue was marking him. This is a player who three, four months ago had never played a senior game in his life, and now we're blaming him for not being good enough at marking. Paul Pogba. Correct, yeah. That's ridiculous. See, this is the thing about it isn't just exclusive to the Primavera. I'm thinking um, Kalulu might not have ever marked anyone that good in his career. In fact, it's highly likely. Not only that, but it was a recipe for disaster because you could see that by playing Pogba on the left wing, they were going for the physical uh, Mm -hmm. outmatching and it worked an absolute treat. So he was kind of set up to fail. And no disrespect to Peter Crouch, who were a good player. The height difference between Kalulu and Pogba is just ridiculous. Mm. Anyway, so he was always going to struggle. It doesn't matter how strong Kalulu is, how many years' experience he had, it just never, it was never going to win a challenge in the air mm. against him. Mm-hmm. I think so, what they actually did was bring Pogba on more with the intention of whipping balls in from the from the other flank and getting Pogba on the far post headers. You know, like Ibra was on Shaw yeah. and he was just beating him in the air every time. I think that's why they did it. But then, of course, ball fell to him for the goal. And um, 
yeah, it's it's hard. Like we've seen it uh, towards the end of that game. Pogba held off whoever it was and drew a foul near right near where the managers were. And you just realise how powerful Pogba is, and he's he's an incredible player. You know, if he could stay fit and he keeps his head screwed on. Um, he walks into probably any team in the world, to be honest. Uh, that's what you're up against. We we couldn't, yeah, we couldn't uh, we couldn't bring a hundred million pound player off the bench, and that was it. Um, but yeah, that that damn night aside, I suppose. Uh, shall we preview Sampdoria? Then we'll do some talking points, I guess. So we're back after the international break with the game, which is very conveniently timed at half 12 on Saturday. That's half 12 uh, Italian time, 11.30 a.m. for us in the UK. AJ, what time are you going to have to get up? Oh, just uh, 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> and all right, I'm thinking that when you get up that early, normally we never win. Correct. Yeah, yeah. That's when <laughs> um, Brignoli yeah, just... scored against us. That's... Uh... Oh. Every bad thing that's ever happened happens on these early kickoff games for me. Mm. Um, so not looking forward to it, but, you know, I'll be there. Mm. Yeah. Well, probably it would be fair to say that I'm like the most pessimistic one out of us all when it comes to previewing games and stuff. I always assume the worst is going to happen. But in this particular phase, uh, in this particular game, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Um, I think the... I know that we've got players who've jetted off for international duty, but it's less than we originally thought because a few of them are back recovering from injuries and the workload of certain players is being managed. So Ibra um, is currently playing. He's actually just got a karate kick style assist uh, for Sweden, but I don't even know who they're playing to be told. Totally and he got an assist on uh, Wednesday night as well. So that's good. He's kind of in form. I don't mind that. And he won't play the friendly. He'll come back and join up earlier than expected. Ben is only playing one out of the two games. So there's like... he got a card, work. so he's already back. Yeah, and Gabby have got a ban as well for, for something. Uh, so that's pretty tactical. I like that. And Chalanog... The only black is... magic. Mm. Yeah, voodoo, voodoo bullshit. Uh, and... Um, what's the other? And Chalanoglu, meanwhile, is playing himself into form. Uh, he's having a great international break. Uh, he's, I think he's got two assists and a goal in the two games so far, so that's pretty good. But love it when, uh, well, I don't really care too much for the international break at the moment anyway, because it's qualifiers for a major tournament when it's not even the next major tournament with the way that the Euros have ended up being this summer and stuff. It, it doesn't bother me. In England, have played uh, Sam and uh, you, you can't really win with that because you either win comfortably or get laughed at. I mean, if anything, we were being roasted for being wasteful in the 5-0 win over San Marino. So here's what it is. I'm ready for club football to come back. Um, and yeah, Sampdoria at home. So here's something. I was looking up Sampdoria's season thinking, I've not really heard an awful lot about them. I've not heard of them being in a relegation battle or them being, you know, rising, pushing up. That's because... They've been either 10th or 11th in the table, so they've moved one position. Uh, they, ha- they haven't they have been it. So they've been either 10th or 11th since the 12th round of the season. So that's pretty mad. They've stayed pretty much in the same position for the last 18 games. Yeah, I think if you, were to ask, if you were to ask like 100 people on the street who is a mid-table Serie A club, I feel like the good majority would say Sampdoria. Yeah. And, you know, that's just always where they're going to be. You know, they're, they're <clears> never going to be a good good enough team to qualify for anything. Probably not getting relegated anytime soon. But, you know, the, they're middle them, of the pack. They're there. The one of them annoying teams are that can just throw up a result out of nothing. And yeah. that's what we need to be careful of going yeah. into Did it. Did they, they beat just, Inter just straight this season? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. they did. Yeah, they yeah. beat Inter 2-1. Recently, they also, so. Yeah. The, the teams they've beaten, like they won uh, away at Fiorentina in the third round. I mean, that's not massive, but then after that, they beat Lazio 3 0 at home. They beat Atalanta 3 1 away. That's when they actually went up into the European positions briefly. So, like, it's Ranieri and it's not a terrible team. So, eventually, they're going to click and they're going to get stuff right against all the good teams. But that being said, they've only won one out of their last six in the league. Um, and those those good results they got the first time round in the second half of the season, they lost against Lazio, they have lost against Atalanta, uh, they got a pounding off Bologna. They're uh, they really are just you know. So middling. I'll, I'll be completely honest. The only time I've watched Sampdoria this year was in the reverse fixture, and I don't remember much of it. Um, so are they a, a three man back line, five man mid? Like what are they lining up with 
Will it be uh, our uh, typical foil? Is what I'm asking. Three five two, I believe it. Can Drever well, as a wing back? Oh, I forgot. Can well, didn't know Can Drever was there, but um, yeah. it's thingy in it. It's Ranieri's tinker man, so he changes formation whenever he sees fit. Uh, mm. But just looking at their most used formation here, I've got a four four two. Uh, with Kandreva as a right mid, Yankto yeah. left mid. I quite like Jakub Yankto. Yeah, he's not bad. The, the um, big plus with this being after international break is he doesn't have the time to tinker and find a system perfect against us, you know? Yeah. He'll, he'll just, I mean, he they've could got a lot of Scandinavian. Field it, but. They've got some Scandinavian players as well that I think will have been away, like Thorsby and uh, Damsgaard and. Uh, Yankto. Apparently, yeah, and apparently uh, Omar Colley might not be back for the game, and he's their best centre back. Um, so, yeah, it's yeah, I, it's a it's a good test for us, I suppose. That would be the best way of putting it. Um, it's not a fixture that lights any rockets and makes me think this is make or break. But after the win against Fiorentina, we now have four on paper, with no disrespect meant to these teams, we have four winnable games coming up before we have another another challenge, so to speak, against the team around us. And uh, if we win the next four, then I think we're going to be in a really good position in terms of qualifying for the top four. And once we get that locked up, we're kind of playing with a bit more freedom and we really can push into, into the late rounds. Have we um, heard anything about all the <clears throat> inter-COVID cases? Have they... Are they yeah, they're is is fine. Every single yeah. one of them? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, typical. I don't wish I have no on anyone, but if... Lukaku, you know, snaps his Achilles. Um, yeah, I'll be honest, I do. They play. I, I understand, you know, not wanting to wish injury on people and being a good person and all that, but I don't You're beyond care. that. Yeah, I, I'd say I'm below that, honestly, because it, it's like a <laughs> scummy thing, but absolutely, I wake up every day and I'm like, man, I hope Lukaku got in a car accident. Like, just I just... Stop in the, oh, my God. Wow. I don't want him to die. But like I wouldn't just say we Hot Wheels practicing some voodoo off the <laughs> I, don't, side. <laughs> I don't have much time for, and the reason that I would say it's probably more justified than other players is because I don't have much time for someone who goes around saying they're going to shoot another player uh, one of our players obviously in Ibra and says all kinds of things about their mum and what they're going to do to their sister and all that kind of stuff not got much time for that when you get really personal like that on a football pitch then I think some of the hate that Lukaku gets for being a fucking Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, I don't even care about wanted. that. Like, have at just it. Just in general, off. I just like you play on a rival team. I hope you can't play. That's it. Mm. Every single That's one. That's the best way of putting it. That's the nicest way of putting it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, who do we need to look out for? Same as always, Fabio Quagliarella. Uh, he's the top scorer in the league. They've got Gabby Adini and uh, oh, he's and their Larkin. top scorer. Okay, I think I think he's. How many goals does he have this season? Because he's not up there right now, is he? No, he's not even in top. Well, yeah, I don't think he's got more than 10, has he? Oh, no. It, no. no. Like yeah, this has been a, a pretty poor season for him, actually, I think. So, Sampdoria's top scorer this season is Valiarello with nine goals. Oh, nine? And then, wow. and then second is um, Kandreva with five. Yeah, They've got a load of players on two and one. So, they, I don't think they're a team that scores in bunches, to be honest. How many goals yeah. do they have this season? Uh, oh, God. Not loads. Um, I'm gonna look it up quickly, but yeah, the, the, there's not an awful lot of. I'm gonna guess you see 33. Two. Sampdoria have goals for 38, goals oh, against God. 42. So 38 will, is the second lowest of any top half team. Um, just for comparison, like obviously mm-hmm. we've got 53, Inter have got 65. So yeah, that's pretty low scoring. Um, but defensively, they're not too bad. I mean, they've conceded the same amount of goals as Roma, uh, who were obviously a top six team. So, um, yeah, early goal is always key. Uh, Ibra's going to start, which is good. He's back. He's, uh, I want to say, firing since he got that goal at Fiorentina and he's been okay on international duty. Um, we might have Rebic back because we appealed the suspension. Um, so if that gets reduced to one game, then I think he probably comes in because he's got rid of his hit problem. But when uh, do we think Le- the hearing will be for that? It's tomorrow. Oh, okay. so we're recording well, on you. Sunday. So Monday's the hearing, so we'll know yeah. from then. And there's optimism apparently to think that it will be overturned purely on the precedent that like players are getting banned for blasphemy and stuff um, for like one game, you know, and and yet 
that's taken so seriously, but clearly a throwaway insult that Rebic has said. And the refs probably get much worse said to them than that, to be totally honest. And all of a sudden they've come up with a two-game ban, which is just What did bizarre. he say to him? I don't remember. He said that um, he saw the ref's <laughs> mum being a whore on the streets of Naples. Yeah, I know. I just wanted to hear you say it. <laughs> I'm not sure he delivered it quite like that as well. Uh, but, you know, it was what it was. Uh, and the ref Maybe didn't like it. Some voodoo shit. The ref took personal offence to that, so it makes you I wonder mean, if yeah. there's a bit of a backstory <laughs> to it. Um, but, <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah, and then uh, Mandzukic is, is 50-50 for it. It would be nice to have him back and just get him even 20 minutes. Like a new signing. Could well be. Uh, yeah, let's let's talk about him for a minute though, because um, someone came out today and said that his renewal is not automatic if we get Champions League anymore. It is performance every, based. Everyone said it, yeah. Um, yeah. Anto Vitiello, Daniele Longo, they all said it, and I think that that was. I think they just wanted to clarify it because it wasn't known if it was if it was the case that he would get an automatic one year extension if we yeah. got Champions League. It's a club option, so we can exercise it. Basically, he has to earn it. That's the bottom line. I yeah. think uh, Arsenal are going to end up keeping him, to be honest. Really? Oh, but I don't. Yeah. I don't mind as a third choice. I mean, the problem is that he's earning one point eight mil for six months, which implies that the one year extension is going to be three point six. Exactly. For a yeah. Year. And uh-huh. if he's going to be, we're going to sign a new centre forward. By the sounds of it, that's the thing. Be it Vlahovic, be it Belotti, whoever, whatever name you want to throw at it, we're going to have a new second choice centre forward. So does that make Mandzukic third choice? And does that then justify three point six mil? Could we use that money? To make sure that we tie. Well, and also with Ibra's these... renewal, I mean, do we think he's going to keep the same wages? Do you think he's going to try for more? I mean, this is Raiola we're dealing with still, so. But apparently, Ibra... apparently, Ibra's re- negotiating his own renewal. Yeah, I'm going to say with Ibra now, I think it he don't really deal so much through Raiola anymore, does he? Like he's just there as a person. Uh, yeah, much. the the Ibra thing sounds like it's pretty advanced, and what's going to happen is, so. The thing called a growth decree in Italy, um, right. which for those who don't know about it, uh, if you've been a resident and you've worked in Italy for two years or more, uh, having come from abroad, you qualify for a 50% tax cut. So obviously, Ibra's on 7 million net salary at the moment, which is actually 14 mil gross because it's basically you pay double in the tax. Um, mm-hmm. And that means that if he renews, because he'll have been here for more than two years when the contract's in play, uh, it'll go down to 10 and a half mil for us. So we'll save three and a half mil from this tax relief thing. Not only that, but the same thing that the 7 million salary is actually going to lower fixed part. And then to make it up to the 7 mil, there's going to be bonuses in there to do with appearances and goals and where we finish and stuff, which makes an awful lot of sense. You know, bonuses are going to be really important in renewals for the next couple of years while finances recover and stuff. You know, a lot of teams are going to be gambling right. these bonuses on getting top four because they know that getting back into the Champions League they'll have the money to pay them out. Um, whereas if they don't, then they don't have to pay it. So that's going to be important moving forward. Um, let's do Sampdoria uh, prediction and then we'll move on to the GGO shit. Um, I'm going to say 2-0. I'll say 3-0. For Sam. Mm-hmm. Just kidding, for us. 2-1 two, two to us. Mm. Good. Well, at least we're all predicting wins. That feels like a rarity at the moment. But I think uh, Zlatan will get another brace. I was just going to say that's my. I think he'll have a, an offside goal to start, so he could be on a hat trick, but it won't happen. I just I got this weird feeling he's not going to get a single hat trick all season, but he's going to get a bunch more braces. Mm, Keep that'd going be nice. I win us a bunch more games if he gets a bunch more. I was looking through when I was doing this quiz and I was thinking, should I do a question on how many braces Zlatan's had? It's ridiculous. Like he's had it's all but five, two games. Eight. He has eight yeah, braces. No, he's only no, got 15 uh, goals. Yeah, it's it's I, I think five, six, bra- six braces and then three sort of individual goals. That's kind of mad. Yeah. Oh, you're doing all comps, yeah. Um no, I'm 15 in the league. 15 in 15 league yeah, games. Yeah. I thought he had five braces and the rest were solos. I'm Doesn't fairly matter. sure he's got six. Yeah, anyway. Um, so that's impressive, his, his record. And if he scores a, a bunch more braces, the suggestions will win a lot more games. So that's yeah. always good. Um, but yeah, that's my prediction as well. Is an Ibra brace. Right, Donnarumma renewal. Uh, it ain't going anywhere. Um, are we worried yet? Are we... What's the... Honestly, I, mean... I could not care less. And I'm probably going to get hounded for this in the comments, but 
I've been saying it for months. If he wants to renew, he'll renew. And we can just... It's not the end of the world. We spoke about like there being a ceiling to what you like, how effective a goalkeeper can be and how high you can actually realistically pay him. And to be the highest paid goalkeeper, I just don't think we should be worrying about it. I don't think he deserves it yet. And I know that sounds harsh after everything that he's done, but he hasn't even played a Champions League minute yet. So I know that's not everything, but for me, I think <clears> there's, other, there's other goalkeepers out there. And if you, if you get the 10 outfield players correct, then the goalkeeper won't have much to do. Yeah, I think it just depends on if we get Champions League or not. And I, obviously, we're headed towards that direction, and I think we will get it. Um, but we need to be certain of that before we could renew him for you know a big money contract. So I think that's all it is. Um, it, it'll the, come down to the wire, but I, I'm not too worried. I don't think realistically there's many clubs out there that are going to pay 10 million neither. I think mm -hmm. there'd be a lot more suitors if they were, but any club that can afford to pay 10 million a year to a goalkeeper have a goalkeeper yeah. earning less that's good enough. Yeah, the only one I'd say might is PSG. Not to you know slate novice or anything, but I, I think Donnarumma would be a big improvement over novice. Just well, it, novice is it would be as then. Well. I right. just be, obviously they've got the money we like with the uh, owners being filthy rich, but for the wage hike for the mm -hmm. different performances you're going to get, I don't think it's going to be massively different. You're just probably yeah. paying for longevity, but I, if, I'm if they don't win think... the Champions League this season, I bet they they do try to make a push for them because yeah, that, that's what they do. You know, they they, they want to win. So I get it. Mm -hmm. That, that's the only thing that the would be to willing see. to pay that kind of money for a goalkeeper. Because you're right, I think there is a ceiling and it's not a necessary position to be on 10 mil a year. No, it's not. And I just, I, it's one thing that I'm just not worried about. Like, if he says he truly loves the club, then we don't even need to have the discussion. He'd be in Cars Milan tomorrow signing a contract. But yeah. he clearly wants to get as much as he can, which is fair enough as a player. But I just, it's not... I know I said earlier, let's give him the captain set. If we're going to sell Robin, you'll let that be the sweetener, but this isn't captain material. Holding no, the club, not, not great to sign a contract. Maldini were on. I think I saw a picture from Gazetta in like 2007. Paolo Maldini were on two million. Players like Bonera for Bali were earning more than him. Yeah. That's a captain that just goes in, signs a contract, whatever's on it, and then they walk back out the door. And you don't yeah. hear out of it, so... It, 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 how much of this goes. is how much of this is Raiola being the problem and not Gigio? Like what's the split in terms of responsibility here? Because I, I think really a lot of it's like... on Raiola, but at the same time, like Gigio could just say no. He didn't have to hire Raiola. Exactly. He, he could have got any other agent. He could have not had an agent. Like Zlatan, the biggest superstar on our team, one of the largest stars in the world for the game, is yeah, Raiola is his manager, but as we just said, he's doing the negotiations himself, you know? Oh. And Everybody Gigi is 22 Raiola. years old. Like, he, yes, he's a kid, he's impressionable. But at the same time, like, it, it's still his career. It's not Raiola's career. Everyone hates Raiola, but at the end of the day, he's only doing his job. Mm -hmm. And we hate him for doing his job, but because he's, he's the good best at it. of the best at his oh. job. So he's only doing his job. Donna Rumor's job is to sign the contract and to play for the land if that's what he wants to do. If he doesn't, I don't want a player that doesn't want to be here. Personally, it's just my opinion, if you're not here for the cause, then see you. Where's the balance, though? Like, for example, Donnarumma will say to Raiola, I want to stay at the club. I want you to negotiate me a contract extension. I think I think that's exactly what's happened, you know, because Donnarumma wants to stay. And then he's, he says to Raiola, you go and you negotiate it. You get everything that you can because I don't want to move. So then Raiola's doing this negotiating. We're now 95 days or something. I've read this morning, 95 days from his contract expiring. At what point does Gigio have to step in and say, this is getting a bit silly now? now? Can you please just agree? Can you please just say, I, I want 8 million fine with me? You know, if that means you get a bit more commission and so be it. I was basing everything on the fact that Raiola's playing hardball because Gigio don't want to move, so he, so uh, Raiola isn't going to get the commission off that move. Apparently, Raiola is now asking for big commissions just to renew, and I'd be saying, no, you can ram it because you set a precedent, man. You know. Well, you, remember you if, he didn't get any off of uh with with Mirabelli, so maybe yeah. he's like, look, I I need to make that up. Oh. You know, he's doing his oh. thing. Hey, yeah. Okay, yeah, that is all. 
all he's doing. And obviously, he wants these superstars so that he can make the money, which is fair enough. But I just, it's one of them that he just needs to. I'd rather this saga be over with soon. Like he's either signed or we announce that he's leaving and we can all just, it's done. We can mm. all just move on from it. The sooner it's no, done, the better. There's none of uh, Raiola's clients that are exempt from this either. You know, Pogba has this every single summer. Erling Haaland's going through it now. You know, his name's been linked with every big club in the world. And you think, it, trouble seems to follow Raiola around. And I think that's because the money follows him around because he's incredibly good at his job. But then I read something, for example, from Calcio Mercato today. Uh, I think it was a Daniel Longo piece. So it has a bit more weight to it. And he was saying sort of at the end of the thing, tensions are pretty high between Milan and Raiola, especially with the Romagnoli thing, because we're not willing to give him a pay rise, nor should we, in my opinion. I don't think he's earned one, but that's probably a discussion for another day. Uh, but the Ypres thing's looking good, so he'll renew, so that's a sweetener. But then we're looking for a young striker. And two of the players that we're apparently looking at is Marlon from PSV. I like him. He's good, good goal scorer. And Myron Boadu from Alkmaar. A bit more of a risk, but still a good goal scorer both of whom are represented by Raiola. So it's like, are we trying to get fully into bed with him here or, or what? Because I think if, you're, if you've if you got tensions with an agent, probably the worst thing you can do is sign more of his clients. That doesn't seem like the, a really good move, to be honest. Um, I don't know, man. I think, it, I, I stand by that, I think he renews. Um, but I'm at the point now as well where um, if he's only going to sign a one or two year extension, I'd rather he leave. I'd rather he yeah. leave. I I only go, I'd... I'm not going through this shit again in 12 months. There's enough. There is some very good goalkeepers out there. GJ, generational, whatever. Yeah. But there is still some very good goalkeepers out there that if you put the right, like I said, the correct templates in front of them, you don't need to worry about these one-off miraculous what, saves. Well, if you think about it as well, like um, what we were saying before about the... Um, about the net salary thing. So if Donnarumma signs a 10 million a year deal for five years, so you don't qualify for the tax relief, so that's a 100 million gross commitment from Milan in terms of having to pay tax as well. And you think about someone like Juan Musso, who might cost you 20, 30 million transfer fee, but his contract sure was an doesn't, take you, four mil. doesn't take you anywhere like near it. that same amount. So you can probably actually sign a replacement who's pretty good for less than the total financial commitment. And then you're looking at someone like Mike Manian at, at Lille, who's a really good keeper. How about him having a 10 million transfer fee? And you think, well, based on Mendy, that could be a bargain. Owners. Yeah, I'd be raiding them, by the way. I'd say he has 25 mil. I'll have that Icone as well. Um, give us Botman if you're feeling generous and throw Renato Sanchez <laughs> in as well. And just take the lot. They're top of league. Yeah. They're doing really well this season. I think PSG passed My... actually last Oh, yeah, they game, did. But... Yeah, sorry, yeah. My main issue is with everyone that's wanting these renewals. I know, seeing today, Kessie wants 127% pay rise yet. Fair enough, he might have earned it this year. Hakan obviously wants big money. Calabria is now asking for a pay rise. They haven't even achieved the minimum target yet, which is top four. Yeah. So how can you then start demanding double your money, triple your money yeah. for some players? It's just, it's getting a bit ridiculous. Like, yes, they're very good players and yes, we need them, but you haven't won anything yet. You haven't even done your bare minimum job. Mm. So get that done. Prove you were, prove that we should commit all that money to you when you're showing it in the Champions League, when you're showing at the highest level you can perform. Because if not, we're going to spend a load of money on all these players that could potentially flop in the Champions League. I'm not saying they would, but they could. And then we ain't going to get rid of them and then we're back to square one like we were at the end of the Galliani Bellasconi era where we were paying high wages for players that we just could not get rid of. And yeah, that's we're true. Not going to... And the ideal would really to be have a load of star players with contracts expiring in 2023. So you could take a look at them next season if we do get back into the Champions League and then make a decision there. But unfortunately, we don't have that. We've got to make a decision on Romagnoli. We've got to make a decision on Kessie and Calabria because they've got contracts expiring in 2022. And we don't know how they're going to fare in the Champions League. You just never know. I don't want to sound That's like not me saying that they don't deserve a pay rise. It's just I oh, don't yeah. think that they deserve it. Double yet. We don't know what they've... amount they deserve a pay rise, but we don't know to what extent. You know, 127 percent just to put it into into numbers. Kessier currently earns 2.2 and his agents ask for five mil. That's more than double. You know, if you walk into the office in any profession and you ask for your pay, you know, comfortably more than doubling, you're probably laughed out the room. 
Um, but yeah, don't get me wrong, Kessie could probably earn that at another club, definitely a Premier League club because they pay astronomical wages. But comes a point where you have to look at it and think, all right, yeah, he's great at the moment, but he was pretty shit for three years, you know? Exactly. Right. And we can't just pretend that with these players that the bad seasons didn't exist before. And just because Pioli's found the system that they're working in, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work next year if we're in the Champions League or if by some whatever reason Pioli leaves and bring another manager in. And then we're just going to be end up paying too much out in wages and we're just not going to be able to get rid of these players. If they plot, I'm only saying if, but yeah. I think they, I think some of these players that are key players to us, like Calabria, Kessie, Hakan, Gija, Romagnoli to an extent, I, I don't think they should be earning double until they've at least had one good season in the Champions League, maybe two. So um, maybe they won a trophy, maybe. There's the rumours that FFP is going away. If that's true, do you guys think we just say fuck it and we renew all these deals at these asking prices because it'll no longer matter? Well, we can afford it, but we've still got a settlement agreement with UEFA. Now, the, the, the thing that's come out about financial fair play, again, to try and put it in the simplest terms, is that it's going to be like FFP 2.0. And all these, te- all these clubs that were under watch for how much they spent, what happens is they get set a target in terms of how much uh, loss they can make in, say, a couple of years' time. So we made over 100 million in losses under Yong Hong Lee, and uh, we spent a load of money on transfers. So they came down hard on us, and they said that by summer 2021, with this agreement, you've got to be at the very most 30 million in the red. So we could make 30 million losses on the accounts that year. But with covid and stuff they basically said it's unrealistic to to mm. expect that now because the clubs have got no revenue coming in um so they're going to wipe that which means that we might then not have any restrictions at all so we should be able to spend a little bit more which which would be ideal now we know elliot can do that because they've got a shitload of money you know they made over mm. over 40 billion during the pandemic last year um so they've got a lot of money they're, they're a rich organization if anything, before we were trying to build sustainably because we had the shackles. I don't want us to just start throwing money at stuff because I feel like that might upset the project. But if they've come in and they've said, we want a low wage bill. We want to lower the wage bill. They've done that from 145 to 90 million-ish. So that's pretty big. But done that by signing young players on pretty cheap contracts. Now, the recruitment model's been pretty standard. We're signing young players who've got potential. They're going to grow into being worth a lot more. Um, we've seen that with quite a few players. We've signed Ben Asser, Teo, um, probably hopefully going to be like Tamari and stuff. Yeah, I heard, I heard today that that we were going to make that official. Or no, no, I was thinking Tonali. Never mind. That, that we knew that well, one too. Tamari as well. Tamari and Tonali are the two that we're going to buy outright, which seems about Yeah, right. yeah, but, but I'm just saying I saw today that someone confirmed it. I don't know. I don't yeah. think it was ever in doubt, but yeah. With the wage bill thing, what I would say is what happens when the project works? So what happens when all these young players that we've brought because we thought they were going to be really good end up being really good and we have to pay them as if they're a really good player? The wage bill goes back up, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. You know, you can't possibly keep doing it unless you want to be like a well, yeah. um, like a Salzburg or something that just develop players for two years and send them on and their wage bill never really moves. It, 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 it's like hard. a Dortmund. I mean, that's essentially what Dortmund does, and they still make it far in the Champions League somehow every year. They are just... But they don't win anything. Well, that's the thing. They just they get like right there, but they never actually do anything. You know. But it's a different attitude in, in the sense that like most of Dortmund's good players end up at Bayern. Can you right. imagine that happening for us with Juve? It'd be awful. It'd be horrendous, but that's their business model. You know, that's... They don't care who they sell to, the, and you can't really get attached to players because in two years, they're gone. Mm-hmm. And it just doesn't seem like, but then they are, in terms of an economic standpoint, probably a model club. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what happens. I, I think my gut feeling is that once we're into the, Maldini keeps mentioning us being in the Champions League for a few years. Now, I don't think that you can bank on being in the Champions League for a few years in a row without investing because uh, you're going to stagnate. Game. You're going to stagnate, aren't you? And you're going to fall. Look at Lazio. You know, they didn't build on their squad when they should have. They kept all the core pieces, fair enough, but they didn't build on it. And now they're probably going to miss out on top four. And that's pretty big blow for them when they've got like Milinkovic, Savic, and Immobile who want to be competing for trophies. 
Um, but I think what happens is we're back in the Champions League. We've got a bit more money to renew the key players, maybe sign in a couple of positions, and we've got to build year on year. And that's the way we've got to do it. We'll use the revenue we get and we build year on year. We can't just go hell for leather first summer. We're back. Bang, here's a load of new signings and expect it to work. Because um, it, it frankly won't work. We got into that. That's exactly what Chelsea have done this year, where they've yeah. signed Havertz, Werner, uh, what's he called? Zaya. Yeah, they've signed all sorts, yeah. Um, and it just it didn't click. And it's just yeah. one of those things you could do. It's just better off just like building a couple of players at a time, like Maldini wants to. Yeah. Getting the right players that fit the bill. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's it. Stability is key. We've seen it with the with not changing manager that it can have a very positive impact and let other teams throw a load of money at it if they have to. Uh, but that shouldn't be us really at this point unless we have to sell a couple of players. Because um, you never know. You, you just never know. A player like Ben has said, he's got a release clause. You know, if someone comes along and pays it, we have to find a replacement. But the idea is he's 50 million is a lot of money to find a replacement. Um, so, yeah, see what happens. Questions? <clears throat> Uh, McLean Wright asks, "How will Pogba fit? Oh, Pogba, Pavega fit into the squad when he's back next year? How does his return from loan affect our market strategy?" I'll answer this fairly quickly. I think Krunic gets sold, um, not because he's been terrible recently. He's not been great, obviously, over the course of his Milan career, but he's contributed a bit at least in in the last few weeks and months. Um, but I think I think Pavega's too similar a player. And we see a future in him because he's 21 and Krunic is 28 now, I think. So um, you stick with your player and you probably offload Krunic. Uh, I think Krunic will stay another year and Pobega will get sold. Capital gains. Sell Pobega. Yeah, yeah. I don't want that to happen, but I agree with AJ. Or maybe he goes out on loan to a mid table Serie A side, maybe one that's fighting for the, like Sassuolo, someone that's just fighting for potentially getting into a European placement like that. But no, I think we'll keep Krunic for at least another year. What I do like, the, the Pavega thing is good because obviously the best thing you can do for your accounts is to sell a player for pure cap at the game. Like that is just an absolute gem. And that's why Juve keep having creative accounting and stuff because they keep selling these youth products of theirs for big, big money. Um, to generate to 40 million that's never had 40 <clears throat> million in the life. But yeah. And then they sell them if back for 12. Be, they, if you can't beat them, join them. That's what I'd say. You know. Yeah. They're, they're... No. Exactly. If. Yeah. Um. So the thing with Paul Baker is there's a real opportunity because he's probably now worth 10, 15 million. We sell him to say a Sasswell or type, and uh, that's that's what the reports are saying that he's worth 10 to 15. Oh no, million. no, no! It just it um, blows my mind because I don't think he's anywhere near that. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. But he's young <laughs> and he's young and he's Italian and Italian. That's not me. Pay. Like dissing him uh, out, but. It's just not anywhere near that, is it? When you think of like the numbers that some of our Maybe. key players, uh, you're rumouring like Tamori at 28 mil, and then apparently Pobega's 15, like it's just a bit crazy. Well, I think Chelsea probably regret that 28 mil yeah. now, but yeah. Um, the thing with Pobega as well is that if we sold him on loan with an option at 15 mil, let's say, that's there'd be another season until that amount is paid. So he might go to a better team on loan and look even better next season. And then it's like, oh, mate, he's actually worth more than 15 mil. You just never know how it's going to go. Um, but uh, I'd sell him and I'd have a buyback. I always thought we should have had a buyback on Locatelli deal. Um, just so, you know, it's maybe set at 2 million more than what you sell him for. And you just... Or just a percentage like we've got with Piscina at Atalanta. Like yeah, it seems like Maybe not cheaper. that state, but... <clears throat> yeah, um... The Cena one's an interesting one. We keep being linked with him, but I, I, I'm hot and cold with it. Every time I see him, I think there's a use for him somewhere in the squad. And then I think he'd come in to be the backup number 10. And I just think ah, it's not that inspiring, you know. Um, but he is good in a team that presses. So, uh, right, next question. Um, we got a few questions from Lucas. Uh, Mischief is sweet today. Uh, right. <laughs> I forgot rates. Uh, right wing options. Uh, who would you pick to sign for the right wing? Uh, PBP said we'd have to a new right winger this summer. So let's assume realistic, so not like a Mbappe or something. Right. Uh, well, Talvin, the, those links seem to be losing some steam here. <laughs> um, those are Busted. dead in the water. My agenda in the mud. Who is uh? There's another one. Inley or Cellini. Or Cellini. I think that's probably like who it. it's going to be. Yeah. 
I, really I, like I, I did like also. I don't have any like pros or cons against him. I think he's just kind of like one of those players you just like, oh yeah, he plays in Syria and that's that's it, you know. I think personally he's a big upgrade on Castillo. Yes, I mean, um, yes, absolutely. And it's that extra that we need. Like, I still think Salamakas will be a starter next year just because he fits the system. And I can't believe you just said his name properly. Yeah, I know. Just for Isaac. <laughs> just for Isaac. I can say it properly. I just thought I'll do what it about for Isaac. Castillejo. <clears throat> Castillejo. Um, Castillejo. But, <laughs> but yeah, Arsene will just give us that bit extra in different games coming off the bench. So I think it's a big upgrade on him. He's uh, He's a bit... Oh, not Suso, like, but in the inverted winger thing where he cuts in to shoot. Um, and I like that. I would like us to have a better goal threat on the right side because the thing about signing Chiesa, if you look at last season, how we ended last season, we had however many goals it was from Zlatan. And, and then um, if we'd have had Chiesa, our front four combined would have had 40 league goals. And that, from your front four, that is outstanding. Um, to be honest, the right winger that I kind of want is Berardi but I just don't know I don't think that happens I don't think that's I don't even think an option it happens either, out of know. the three we just talked I'd, I'd absolutely pick him but I don't think it happens that's Berardi gets a thumbs up from Jan I think I'd, I'd like Berardi sorry I'd just size him out but yeah I really like Berardi yeah <laughs> another one who cuts in and, and he's a leader you know he's captain of um, Sassuolo so he knows what it's been like to carry a team on his back for a while um, so he would be good, but I also think there's li- limited chance of it happening. Otavio's renewed with Porto. He's good. more of attacking mid anyway. Talvin's probably going to renew in Marseille. Icone is the one that keeps getting linked, and PBP, uh, Pietro Balzano Proto, uh, works for First One, this agency, and they've just signed Icone, and today he just tweeted that Milan are after a new right winger, and Calcio Mercato are saying we want Icone. <laughs> So maybe you can put a few things together there and say he's changed agency and he's going to get brought to Milan. I would love him. Pace, power, goal threat. I'm a big fan of him. He's a bit raw. Like, you know, he's he's your typical speedster winger. Sometimes his technique's left wanting a bit. But um, he plays in a good side as well. He plays in a good side that plays the right way. And he can play right or left wing. So I, I would like Icone, but I, I, I'm apprehensive about the price tag. I reckon it could be north of 30 mil. And I don't know if we have that to spend. I'd much rather that money be plowed into Tamani, for example. Um, uh, I heard rumors of like a hundred mil budget for the summer. So, yeah, I think that that you have to factor in uh, Tamani oh, right, and Tamani. Tamani's buyouts yeah. in that. So it might be fifty. Yeah, that's what I'm saying though. I mean, if, <sighs> like if we wanted to go out for a thirty mil player, I think we can, especially on the right wing slot. Because if you look at our team right now, that's our weakest spot. If we had a thirty mil caliber player in there. I, I bet we probably don't lose that spot in the the race. I, I bet mm-hmm. we'd still be in first if we had that all season long, given the form everyone else has been in. I don't know. I don't think there's actually a lot that this team needs building on I agree. at the moment. And, and that's why and, I think uh, you splash as much as you can on those single positions. You know, We don't need a rebuild. Yeah. We just we need a reinforcement. Just a bit I think reduced. we just need a striker, a right winger, and then Get right that's back. it that, that, that we need. Yeah, the possibility. Uh, then obviously, we need like the backups, but I'd <clears throat> keep Mate for another year on loan. I know that's probably going to get a lot of things, but I, I don't think it's also in him. I would be, be steal. dead against extending Brahim's loan for another year. Um, if the buyout the reason, is lower, sure. Yeah, if there's one inserted at all, that would be good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we got a lot of questions on similar things. GG are leaving, um, money with CL, right wing options. So. Yeah, we'll wrap it up there. Um, thank you very much for listening. I've been your host, Ollie Fisher. You can find me on Twitter at Ollie Fisher. Uh, check our pinned tweet. We've got a giveaway going on that ends um, just kick off Sampdoria game. It's for a retro shirt. Check out. Love, love it. Love those shirts. Um, been joined by Anthony. Yep. Uh, Talker45. See you next week. At UK underscore yeah. racing, Milan. Thanks for watching, Ciao. everyone. We'll catch you in a week's time. Andrea Conti, bella palla per Rebic, Rebic Ibra, Rebic, 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 il tiro, gol!